pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Vietnam Veterans News Podcast. News of interest about Vietnam veterans from a Vietnam veteran. Now, here's your host, Mac Payne. This is Mac Payne here with episode 1838 of the Vietnam Veteran News Podcast. News about the Vietnam War and the brave veterans who served there, as told to you by yours truly, a Vietnam veteran. In this episode, I'm going to share with you a feel-good story. Not only is it a feel-good story, but also it is a verification story. This story will help verify an assertion I frequently make on this podcast. The Vietnam veteran generation is as great as any that ever heeded the call of duty from its country. We served our country over there in Vietnam in a difficult situation. When we came home, we were older, wiser, stronger, and better able to deal with adversities than our non-Vietnam veteran contemporaries. And we continued serving our country in a wide array of pursuits. The Vietnam veterans just keep on proving that year after year. The reason I call it a feel-good story, in addition to being a verification story, is that it talks about two Vietnam veterans who finally, after 50 years, have gotten together in person to talk over old times. This is a wonderful thing to do. I encourage every Vietnam veteran to reach out to some of your old buddies from Vietnam and get in touch with them. You'd be amazed at how much you would enjoy it. I had that experience myself not long ago. I got to meet up with two of my good buddies from A Battery, 4th of the 77th Field Artillery, ARA, in the 101st Airborne Division. I had not seen either of these two gentlemen for 50-plus years. The one big thing that hit me right in the face was how old they looked compared to me. I couldn't believe they were so old. Just kidding. A lot can happen to a person in 50 years, age-wise, including myself. I'm sure I looked a little older to those guys. It only been 50 years. The story I'm going to share with you that puts all this together comes from Middleburg, New York. The story appeared in the Times Herald Record newspaper up there. It was titled, Vietnam Combat Buddies Reconstruct Half a Century Later in Wurtsboro. Wurtsboro is like a little subdivision of Middletown, New York. Just for your information, Middletown sits about 20 or 25 miles due west of Newburgh, New York. You probably are well aware that there's some guys over in Newburgh that build custom motorcycles. Their place is known as Orange County something. They build motorcycles over there. So now you know where Middletown, New York is. Not too far from the big custom motorcycle place over there. This story was written and submitted by none other than Rachel Etlinger, a writer for the Times Herald. She did a great job. That's another reason I'm sharing this story with you. Sit back and relax as you hear about how two Vietnam veterans got together years later, one from New York State, the other one from Mississippi. It was a big deal to these two guys, which you're going to find out. Let's take a look at it. Dateline, Wurtsboro, New York. Al Bedford, 77, of the village, and his combat buddy Leroy Bledsoe, 73, of Hickory Flat, Mississippi, met up for the first time in 52 years this week. By the way, Hickory Flat, Mississippi, is just a few miles southeast of Memphis, Tennessee, up there in North Mississippi. Continuing, the Vietnam War veterans who finished their service together in September of 1968 last saw each other in a fight for their lives. Bedford was 25 at the time and Bledsoe was 21. 
Their group found a cemetery to sleep in one night more than five decades ago in Vietnam when gunfire erupted all around them. At least, if you were in a cemetery, the headstones should have been able to provide them with some hard cover. Continuing, Bedford said, We didn't think we were going to see daylight, but Bledsoe added, We ended up building a bond. Many times that will happen when you're sleeping in a cemetery and suddenly you're attacked by the NVA. That can be extremely bonding. Continuing, the two have spent this last week going out to dinner, reminiscing about their time serving their country, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and catching up on the time they missed out together. Bedford's new home of almost a year in Wurtsboro, with his wife of 56 years, Dottie, was the perfect venue. They lost touch for more than four decades before reconnecting by phone in 2014 a service that helps bring veterans of foreign wars back in touch with their combat buddies brought the two together. I'm guessing that service was made possible by the VFW. Continuing. For nearly six years, the former artilleryman talked on the phone regularly, frequently discussing the meeting up, but never acting on it. Finally, Bledsoe said to H with it, He went ahead and booked his ticket. A war did not stop them before. A pandemic wasn't going to stop them now. Bedford went to the Stewart International Airport in New Windsor with his neighbor Jim Ryan, an Iraq war veteran, to pick up Bledsoe for their reunion on Monday. By the way, the Stewart International Airport is about 20 miles due east of Middletown, right near Newburgh, where they make those custom motorcycles. Continuing, Bledsoe said, My heart was jumping with joy. They both marveled at the fact that they each have seven grandchildren. They lived lives of service even after their time in the Army. Now get this. Here's the verification part of this story. Bledsoe was a firefighter for more than four decades before retiring years back. Bedford, a longtime Staten Island resident before moving to the Mid-Hudson a year ago, worked for the New York City Sanitation Department for decades before retiring in the mid-1990s. Bledsoe said, He's just as close to me as my brother is. The two men who once nearly lost their lives trying to clear an M60 machine gun are now lounging on the couch. It's an activity they much prefer now. It allows them the time to share half a century worth of memories with a long-distanced best friend. What a story, what a story. I know exactly how those guys felt. It felt the same way to me when I ran into my two good buddies, Brock Wells and none other than Rick Scruggs. Got to talk about things that happened 50 years ago. It's amazing how you can reconnect instantly after 50 years. There's something else I'll guarantee you is this. Bledsoe worked as a fireman for four decades. Bedford worked in the New York City Sanitation Department for decades And this is the guarantee. They did an outstanding job at their work. Because, as I've said many times earlier, when the Vietnam veterans came home, they were older, they were wiser, they were stronger, and they were better able to deal with adversities than their non-Vietnam veteran contemporaries. Can you imagine the adversity and challenge of having to fix a jammed M60 machine gun in the middle of a battle? That'll give you lots of wisdom. That's why I say this generation is as great as any that heeded the call of duty from its country. It was a tough time over there in Vietnam, and most all of these veterans, when they came home, they didn't come home and enjoy a big barbecue or a parade in their honor. No, they were abused verbally and sometimes physically by a misguided group of anti-war protesters. Most of the veterans coming home tried to ignore it and just get home and see their families and get on with their lives. 
Not all of them did that, though. Melvin Page of Kingston, Tennessee, didn't do that. When he was coming back through the airport in San Francisco, he and his two Marine buddies he was traveling with were accosted by a group of anti-war protesters. They started doing vile things to Melvin and his two Marine buddies, saying bad things about them, spitting on them, and threatening them. Unfortunately, they picked on the wrong veterans. Melvin, who was and still is a pretty good-sized person, along with his two Marine buddies, jumped on those protesters. There were four of them there. All four of them were taken away on stretchers after Melvin and his buddies finished with them. Despite all that trouble, when the veterans came home, they got busy and continued serving their country because they were better prepared to do it. Al Bedford and Leroy Bledsoe are tremendous representatives of that generation. I'm glad they were able to get together and share some old times and enjoy those conversations. I encourage all Vietnam veterans to follow their example. Try and contact some of the people you served with over there in Vietnam. Talk over old times. I think you would enjoy it. That's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. This is Mac Payne closing out episode 1838 of the Vietnam Veteran News Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You are cordially invited to return again soon and often to listen to more of these stories that will be coming your way on this podcast, the Vietnam Veteran News. How about that? Ain't that a mess?